James Webb Telescope finally proves the Big Bang Theory is wrong. Out in the depths of space, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, is already revolutionizing what we thought we would find as far as distant galaxies go. However, the claim that this disproves the Big Bang has made scientists super suspicious about the origin of the universe and whether the Big Bang actually happened or not. So, did the Big Bang happen? And has the James Webb Space Telescope found evidence against the Big Bang? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about if the James Webb has finally disproved the Big Bang Theory. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. Although we don't usually hear of it, there's been dissatisfaction with the standard model, which begins with the Big Bang, ever since it was first proposed by George A. LeMay nearly a century ago. But no one expected the James Webb Space Telescope to contribute to the debate. A recent revolutionary assertion has gone viral, claiming that the Big Bang never happened, and that the latest data from the James Webb Space Telescope, JWS2, has proven it. The notion of the Big Bang has never sat that well with many all the way from its earliest incarnations in the 1920s and the 1940s and has been continuously challenged since its inception. However, the evidence has remained overwhelmingly in its favor ever since the 1960s, and no other serious competitors have ever been able to reproduce its success. Which leads one to wonder, what are the merits, if any, of this latest claim? Could it be true? And if so, how and why? Originally, the Big Bang was a simple idea that grew out of three facts all put together. In Einstein's general theory of relativity, a universe filled with any uniform distribution of matter and or energy will not be stable in a static configuration. The fabric of space in that universe must either contract or expand. Observationally, there are spirals and ellipticals in the sky, and they lie well beyond the Milky Way. Their distances can be measured. Also, observationally, the light from these spirals and ellipticals appears to be shifted, with more distant objects exhibiting a greater redshift in direct proportion to their distance, consistent with an expanding universe. By combining these three facts, we'd conclude that the universe, if it's expanding and becoming less dense today, must have been smaller and denser in the past. We can extrapolate this back farther and farther to even very early times if we like, and recognize that our modern universe must have emerged from a denser, smaller, more uniform state in the very distant past. Over time, we were able to derive many more consequences from the Big Bang, including that the early state must have been hotter as well as denser, and that as the universe expands, it also cools. This allowed us to predict that there would be a leftover bath of low-energy radiation, with a blackbody spectrum in all directions arising from when the universe cooled through the threshold that enabled it to form neutral atoms. Secondly, the universe would have, at even earlier times, been hot and dense enough to initiate nuclear fusion reactions before any stars could form leaving us with an initial abundance of elements other than hydrogen among the pristine set of atoms that the universe begins with. And lastly, that once neutral atoms form, the universe begins gravitating to form structure in the universe. Stars, star clusters, clouds of gas, galaxies, galaxy clusters, and eventually the great cosmic web, filled with filaments and voids. All of these aspects of the Big Bang have been verified and validated, ruling out a great many alternatives that cannot reproduce these successes. Today, there are three additional ingredients that we've learned are also present in the universe. Dark matter, which clumps and gravitates but doesn't collide with normal matter or photons. Dark energy, which behaves as a form of energy inherent to space itself. And cosmic inflation, which limits how far back into the past we can extrapolate the hot Big Bang before matter and radiation no longer dominated the energy contents of the universe. Now, wrapping it all up, how has JWST made pushed all the surprising claims about Big Bang even further? It might be hard to believe, but we only started seeing our very first science results from the JWST in mid-July 2022. 
Perhaps the biggest surprise, other than the astounding technical performance of the telescope, which is arguably twice as good as it was designed to achieve on many fronts, is what it's seen in the realm of galaxies. While we knew JWST would push far past what Hubble's limited capabilities have seen, we had no idea its performance would be so revolutionary in such an early stage of its observation campaigns. According to the observations made by JWST, there are greater numbers of galaxies out there than Hubble ever saw, including at distances that Hubble would never be sensitive to. Some of these galaxies appear more evolved, more massive, and at earlier stages than not only we'd previously seen, but than many models and simulations had expected. Moreover, some of them might be even massive and quite evolved at epochs between 200 and 350 million years after the Big Bang. The current confirmed record holder from Hubble was already 407 million years after the Big Bang. And finally, nearby galaxies, in contrast to what Hubble saw, appear smaller and more compact with JWST's improved resolution. This new set of observations presents an exciting challenge for our modern cosmological theories, and an exciting challenge for cosmologists to try and puzzle out. So, why do these galaxies have the properties that they do? Can our standard model of cosmology be reconciled with these observations? And if not, what sort of implications does that have for what else we might learn about dark matter, the expanding universe, or other aspects of our cosmic history? These are all legitimate research questions that people are actively working on right now at this very moment. And although the Webb telescope cannot tell us anything about the Big Bang event and has not shed any doubt on the fact that the universe expands, it can tell us whether the formation of early galaxies is compatible with the concordance model, in particular with the hypothesis of dark matter. That's because galaxy formation in a universe with dark matter is expected to proceed slowly and gradually. In this case, one does not expect young galaxies to be large. In a scenario with modified gravity, to the contrary, galaxies grow much faster. One does expect large galaxies at early times. Therefore, the tentative first evidence from the Webb telescope seems to show large galaxies at early times, which is a problem for the concordance model. However, the error bars on this data are currently large, and quite possibly the situation will change in the coming months. But at least for now, that's the situation. Astrophysicists are both excited and upset that the Webb telescope data seems to cause trouble for the concordance model. So it's this kind of puzzling and unexpected data astronomers were hoping for. But ultimately, this is why we wanted to build the Webb telescope in the first place, because it will tell us that while the Big Bang model isn't wrong, some of our assumptions about it might be. In the meantime, astronomers continue to learn more about the early universe, with the fantastic data coming down from JWST. The irony is that JWST's observations are actually supporting the Big Bang model, showing that the first galaxies were smaller and grew larger over time. Just as Big Bang cosmology predicts, the surprising finding that galaxies in the early universe are more plentiful and a little more massive and structured than expected doesn't mean that the Big Bang is wrong. It just means that some of the cosmology that follows the Big Bang requires a little bit of tweaking. And that's the fun of science. Despite the arguments from science deniers, science is never clean cut. We're always learning, always improving our theories, and there is no shadowy conspiracy trying to stamp out independent thought. More than anything, science is based on observation and evidence, which the Big Bang has in bucket loads. However, that's not to say people shouldn't be allowed to question things, but intelligent questioning is done in a framework of open-mindedness without preconceived ideologies, where beliefs are forged by evidence rather than the other way around. That's exactly how the Big Bang Theory was conceived nearly a century ago, by following the evidence that the universe is expanding, working out what this might logically mean, and then testing it on predictions such as the existence of the CMB radiation. So, the next time you read someone saying that the Big Bang didn't happen, or that the Earth is flat, or that climate change isn't happening, don't take for granted what they're saying. Politely ask them for their evidence and hold it to the highest standards, just like a scientist would. And this is it for today, guys. 
What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.